Hello everyone, I'm John Lin, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and this is our EHR telehealth series. And next up in our series of interviews with EHR vendors is Athena Health. And we're lucky to be here today with Paul Bryant. He's chief product officer at Athena Health. Welcome, Paul. Hey, it's great to be here today. Yeah, so I'm excited for this. I mean, this is a fun series for me since I live, eat, breathe, and sleep EHR and have for many years. And and now I think telehealth is such an important component of an EHR. And, and what is the EHR strategy and how do we connect it? So I'm excited for the discussion. But before we dive into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and Athena Health? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm currently the chief product officer at Athena Health. And I, I joined reasonably recently, last, uh, last September, which in COVID world seems like forever ago. Um, but I'm a healthcare IT lifer. I actually, when I was in high school, I wrote a practice management system for doctors back on Apple wow. IIe's uh, <laughs> and got sucked into healthcare and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I came most recently from running a company called Patient Keeper, which we sold into HCA uh, and was an executive at HCA for the last five years before uh, Bob called me and said, hey, come, come join Athena Health. And I think as, as most people know, Athena Health is one of the leading uh, ambulatory EHR uh, companies, uh, I think our, our biggest stick is that we are the you know, great solution for small independent practices. So uh, we're, we're pretty excited to be here today and talk about telehealth. Yeah, so t tell us a little bit, you know, what was Athena Health's view of telehealth pre-COVID-19? And then obviously, how did COVID-19 change that approach? Well, if you'd asked me about telehealth on January 1st, I would have been like, yeah, that's something we have in the marketplace and we have a few people that use some telehealth for some visits. But not really part of our plan or roadmap, frankly. Um, fast forward to today, we, we saw telehealth utilization go from a fraction of a percent to 30, 40% of the visits across the Athena network. And uh, we realized that uh, telehealth and virtual care uh, is likely to be here to stay. And certainly uh, it, is, it is here right now. And we uh, decided to enter the market and, and come up with a first class offering of our own. Yeah, so why did you, uh, you guys went and decided to develop your own telehealth solution. Why did you choose to go that direction rather than, say, partner with uh, partners or, or, or other options? Well, we, we have about 10, 15 partners, depending on how you count telehealth, uh, already. And we've had those for a long time. And, and they're great. And they certainly uh, fulfill a need in, in the marketplace. So nothing I'm about to say should detract from that. Um, but for our kind of average practice, what they really wanted was a really easy way to con conduct a visit uh, remotely instead of in person. So same idea, schedule an appointment, you know, have patient come in or have patient not be in uh, and have it be a pretty identical workflow. And that's tough to do with the way most partners are focused really wasn't on that particular problem and wasn't really, really tightly integrated. So our customers really came to us and said, hey, we need a better way than list all of the different options that they have, including, you know, teams and uh, and, and FaceTime and all that stuff. Uh, so we, we listened and we built a better way. And, and you built it all in house. You didn't. You aren't using a Twilio or, or something else underneath as a partner. You, you built That's your correct. own. We we, we, okay. we rolled our own. Yes. Great. And, and you know, I think you you pointed out exactly uh, the thing that I think our audience loves, which is okay, how do you create this integrated experience? So can you talk more about how deeply integrated is this into your EHR and, and really your PM solution? And, and maybe what's available now and what are you still working on? Yeah, I mean, it, it is totally integrated. It's, it is literally the same workflow. So you start with scheduling an appointment and there's just a decorator you can put on the visit type and say, hey, you know, you're coming in for your annual well visit, but we'll check here to say this is going to be virtual. And that just can flows in all the way through. And then when you go through the process, you still do a check-in process just like you would in the office. Um, there's just a little icon on the schedule that reminds you that it's a virtual visit. And when you go into the EHR, there's a little window for the patient. Uh, and you can move the window around if you want, all within the system so you can document and, and whatever else. And hopefully you have a decent size screen, so it's, it's fine. Um, but it really is, it, it is literally no different from a workflow perspective except for that you designate it a telehealth visit at the beginning and you end up with a video screen instead of a patient sitting in front of you. And, and this may be diving into our, and ruining our lightning round, but that's all right. Uh, you know, <laughs> is it, do they have to log into the portal to be able to access the visit or do you just send them a link that they can access? What's the patient flow? Uh, the, the, the patient flow is simply they get a link. So you can send a link through whatever mechanism you want, email, uh, SMS. Uh, they click on a link. It's unauthenticated. So you know, they don't have to like sign in and create passwords and go through that. They, they have a link they can get in, um, and we even allow other people to come in and join. If they want a family member to join, they can. we can send a link to them as well. 
Okay. And from the doctor perspective, do they do it right in the EHR application or how, what's the workflow yeah. there? There's no separate sign in or anything. It's just you're in, you're in the HR and you happen to have a, a, a video screen in the, in, in, on your on your screen as a, as a patient. That's awesome. And now I think everyone knows Athena Health is a, a web-based application. Uh, Jonathan Bush made that clear uh, you know, throughout all the years. So, so, so we already know how that how that's working and, and the approach there. So I think that'll be clear to most people. So let, let's do this. Uh, I call it the feature lightning round. So let's go through a whole list of features with just short answers. You know, do you have it? Do you not? Are you working on it? Are you going to have partners do it? Um, just to get a feel for, okay, what's available now? What are you working on? So let's go through uh, this one uh, I, I think doesn't need to be said, but uh, I'll just say it for com you know comprehensive nature. Is it HIPAA compliant? Absolutely. Yeah. If you said no, I'd we'd yeah, have, we'd, we'd, we'd end the end interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, everyone knows that. All right. How about custom branding? What custom branding options are available? Uh, not yet, but it's coming. Uh, coming soon. Okay. And any thoughts on what you, you know, I assume it's going to be logo of, of their organization and things. Is that what you're thinking or is it still too early? Yeah, we're doing a bunch of work kind of around, around the patient experience and, 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 and kind of custom waiting rooms. So you could play content, you can put your brand up in the waiting room, um, you know, icons, uh, color, that sort of thing. Gotcha. That makes sense from the waiting room perspective. How about uh, telehealth appointment scheduling? I assume that's, it's all integrated. So that's part of the integrated process. Oh, absolutely. 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 And how about patient self-scheduling? Uh, we've got that. That's actually a reasonably new offering in general. Uh, it's coming super handy in the COVID crisis for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I think patient self-scheduling may have seen its heyday thanks to COVID, but uh, it's similar. <laughs> <time up. laughs> no one wants to call anymore and they're not in the office. So uh, <laughs> that makes right. sense. Great. Uh, how about asynchronous text messaging with the patient? Uh, that's very much part of our roadmap. Um, since we, we aren't authenticated yet, so we got to work on that part. Yeah. So you, you can still do it through the portal, which I think that, you know, we've always been able to do messages right. that way, but not right. the asynchronous text. Uh, but not in, in, in the context of the telehealth. You, you like to have a little thing right next to the screen where, you're, where you chat with the patient, um, but we're not and there that, yet. And that's the other piece. Uh, you know, I call it real-time text chat. So asynchronous may be before the visit reminders or, or send me pictures of your wound or whatever it might be. But, you know, how about real-time text uh, chat during the visit? Uh, so if I want to share, like, a patient resource or maybe you send me the image in real-time, it sounds like you're working on that? Yeah, we're working on that. We're really working on beefing up our, our, our whole two-way messaging with patients. Um, there's a lot that can be done there, and um, so that, that's, that's part of that. So it's, it's definitely coming, but probably not until early next year. Okay. That's good to know. And uh, interestingly, some people are making the case we should just do asynchronous text because that's how care should be done. But anyway, d topic for another discussion, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, 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 there are some applications for that that make sense. I'm not sure all of them, but, but certainly some. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is how do you pay for it? And anyway, there is always a knack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, web based or app based uh, I, I think this one is probably clear for athena health but I'll, you can go ahead and answer it <laughs> yeah it's all it's, it's all web based uh, and you know works on any device which is which is kind of nice and trust mm -hmm. me when you get you know, it you see a lot of different devices <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah very very true and you guys don't have any i mean you have some mobile apps but uh, there's no need for it uh, we don't we, we are we have a mobile app for physicians um, we don't really have a patient mobile app we have a, an app called athena well for uh, people that are on a population health product. Um, we will, at, at some point, uh, probably 2022 at this point, have a mobile app for patients uh, okay. to kind of instead of portal, because, you know, portals were, were, you know, still are awesome, but people are kind of app driven these days. So um, that's definitely something that is on the roadmap for us. Sure. Well, I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, Jonathan Bush definitely drove home the, uh, the, the web based initiative. So it, it just makes sense to do that. Uh, how about audit logs? Uh, we do. Um, we've got we've, we've got them. I mean, you know, a, a lot of weird stuff happens with different devices. People show up with you know devices they drug out of a drawer that hadn't been turned on for four years or something. So we uh, we, we we do have them. We're, uh, we're 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 still working around. You know, do we ever expose any to clients um, or not? So right now they're they're, they're logs for us. Um, you know, some amount of troubleshooting goes on with our clients in terms of patients can't connect or patients doing weird stuff and. We're trying to make that as self-service possible, but we, we, we may expose some of those audit logs to our clients. 
And I imagine you're doing plenty of audit logs as far as the doctor logging in and, and all on that end, which I think is the HIPAA compliance requirement. Oh yeah, certainly for the HIPAA compliance, yes, yes, we we, we absolutely have all that. Uh, but the ones that we're that we're using the most are the ones to understand, you know, that someone brought their BlackBerry uh, to the table and, and they're trying to sign on with that browser or something. Um, so uh, that 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 that's proves to be pretty important for us. Yeah, there are the two types, right? The tech logs is one thing. Uh, the other is, uh, you know, how do you verify that it was indeed the doctor that logged in and, and accessed it or did someone access it inappropriately, et cetera. I, th I think there's going to be a lot of telehealth companies who don't do this right. I think EHR vendors, are, we don't have to worry about as much. Uh, so anyway, that will be an interesting thing to, to watch going forward. Um, all right, how about automated patient reminders? Uh, absolutely. That's, that's a pretty important piece. Yeah, sure. I imagine it's the same reminders you would use for a regular visit, but just applied to telehealth. Is that the idea? Exactly, and, and including the, the, the link in this case. Um, oh, yeah, of course. Makes sense. Uh, how about patient intake paperwork done electronically, so basically virtual forms? Yes, we've got, we've got that. We're, we're, we're beefing it up even more um, to take in things like scan images and stuff like that, but uh, we've got the basics there now working pretty nicely. Yeah, and I think if we looked at the Athena Health Marketplace, there's probably a 10 or so forms companies that you could add on as well. <laughs> there definitely are. There's a lot of, a lot of that going on. <laughs> yep, definitely. All right, how about the uh, virtual waiting room? You kind of mentioned that. It, it sounds like that's on the roadmap. We've got, we've got one now. It's just not branded. So it's, it's, it's just a very, I mean, it's very, so shall we say it's bare bones? <laughs> not a lot of entertainment, no education, no, you know. We, but it's a, it, we'd like it to be a little bit more than just, hey, the doctor's going to connect soon. Um, mm -hmm. So we're working on beefing that up. Is there a whole workflow associated with the waiting room where any doctor could take it or the MA could take it and then the doctor could take it? Or how have you approached workflow from that perspective? Yeah, we, we, we generally don't do the any doctor piece just because we've set up the expectation by setting an appointment that it's an appointment with doctor, sure. named doctor. But anyone could take it. Um, so it is a workflow in the office. So typically there's an MA uh, to do the kind of prep, make sure the patient's there, take, you know, take vitals uh, to the extent that you can take them uh, and, and do the, the pre-visit. Pre yeah. It's like, hold, a, hold up your Apple watch. Um, you can, uh, you can do the kind of pre-visit prep stuff uh, and then it flows over to the doctor. And it could be any doctor. If, you know, for some reason, Dr. Jones is out and Dr. Smith's covering um, in the office, they could, they could, they could do that. But uh, uh, the, the, we don't really have the, 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 the telehealth version of, hey, click here to see any doctor right now. So we haven't, we, that, that, we're not sure that's in scope yet for us ever. Um, that, you know, this is very much a prearranged appointment between doctor and patient. Sure. I, I think the other workflow is maybe urgent cares or, you know, trying to yeah. do it more that direction. Uh, that's where that matters more. Uh, although, uh, you know, I, I guess it's interesting that every organization is different as, as we learn from this one in EHRs. <laughs> they all have their own workflow. <laughs> cool. Uh, how about multilingual? And yeah, I guess maybe this is kind of a separate remote interpretation. Yeah, um, we, we, we do the, do those as, as separate. Um, so we are, we are not yet multilingual, but we will be soon. Our, our, our portal is, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that for, for telehealth very soon. The remote interpretation is something that we'll use a partner for uh, to, and we already have the capability of inviting a third party onto the call. Uh, so that's something that we will make available or, or, or it'll be available through the marketplace. You can technically do it today. It's just, you have to arrange it yourself. Sure. So, I mean, it sounded like you could invite other people. So that applies to remote interpretation. Makes sense. How about, and you know, I guess this is kind of similar, team-based sessions, um, having the multiple care providers. Uh, how, how many can uh, come on? You know, we already established you can have multiple. I think the limit is five or six, but it's an arbitrary limit. So there's no technological reason, um, but we, we picked one and I can't remember what we picked. But, um, and you know, we're, we're, frankly, we see less teaming of providers and more teaming of patients on the patient side where you'll have, uh, you know, it's actually really cool because you know, if you're taking care of elderly parents, for example, and you're not in their city. In the old days, you couldn't go to the doctor's visits, right? Now you can go to the doctor's visits. So we see a lot more multiple patients than multiple physicians if you look at the kind of the team. Sure. Yeah, the teaming is more in the hospital from the physician side when you have right. the whole care team and stuff. Uh, that, exactly. that is great, though. Can, can the care provider use the same link as the patient, or does the patient have to invite them, or what's the flow of, to bring in a, you know, a care? Uh, the patient can invite them, or the provider can invite them. So either, e either way. Um, okay. Nice. All right. And uh, let's see what's next. Uh, integrated clinical documentation. 
Yeah, I, I think this is actually one of the places where we really shine because it's the same documentation workflow that you're used to doing. So the only difference is that on your screen, you've got a patient you're talking to. So you're doing the same workflow and the same uh, documentation process that you would if the patient was sitting in front of you. Nice. Uh, you know, I, I'm still pushing all the EHR vendors to implement uh, ambient clinical voice in telehealth. So ho hopefully we get there at some point. Uh, yeah, another topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and frankly, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great platform because you don't have to worry about the microphone, right? In, in office, the mic is a big problem. And here, there's not that. So it, it is a very good uh, use case. Yeah, I think it was my first article I wrote once uh, telehealth exploded and we realized this was going to happen. I said, why aren't they all calling Nuance and Sykera and all these vendors to, to solve that problem, right? And make that the expectation. So exactly. soon, soon enough. Uh, how about a screen image capture? And I think we're talking about, you know, if I hold up my wound, you know, can yeah. you take a screen image of it? Uh, not yet, but you will be able to by uh, January time frame. Um, you'll be able to, 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 to capture screens and share screens and Good, good for x-rays too, if you've got an x-ray, you know, if you've got an a, a image on your PAC system, you can share that as well. Sure, and so you're working on uh, being able to share, say, a, a web browser or something, if you want to do some patient education or other things as well, that, that's on the roadmap? Exactly, yeah. Um, pretty common, I mean, we could do it today in our, in, our, in, our, in our web chat, so pretty common functionality and people kind of take it for granted, so we, we got to get that in there. Yep. No, I think it makes sense from a patient education standpoint, from showing the results standpoint, you know, even a chart. You know, there's a lot of things that could be shared that would be really interesting. The screen image capture, of course, people could always hit print screen, but we know the HIPAA issues with that. So th yeah. that makes sense to integrate it eventually. <laughs> you'd, like, you'd like it to store, store it logically in the chart, too, without yeah. you know, saving to desktop and importing it and all that nonsense. So. Yeah, which uh, that excludes, what, 75% of providers that... Yeah. <laughs> right. That, that's tough for them. Uh, you know, it's tough for all of us. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Patient education. Um, and we've got some. We, we, we you know, the scene in general doesn't have tons of of educational content for patients, but we're working to continue to beef that up, likely through partnership. Yeah. Well, it, and you have everything that you had for the existing visits, right? Uh, right. I assume it's all similar. Uh, how about uh, post-visit patient ratings? And, you know, this might be two or three categories. So ratings, reviews, surveys. Yeah, that's something that we've always used partners for. So uh, we've got a bunch of marketplace partners that, you know, they're not specific to telehealth, but they're out there. And people use them to do all the analytics and do NPS scores and do all the things that you frankly should be doing for your practice. Um, so that's nicely and easily integrated into the CNA ecosystem. Yeah, it makes sense to do it through partners. There's some people who, who do this really well, and there's so many ratings review sites, and they're very regional. So uh, yeah. that's, a good, that's a good place to put partners. Uh, how about patient payment? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm, we're, we're working to expand our patient payment options. We're, we're kind of uh, credit card focused right now, but trying to get a little fancier and be venmo -y and paypal -y and Apple Pay and all that good stuff uh, to make it easier. Going to take Bitcoin? No, <laughs> <laughs> We'll lock yeah, their screen and say send Bitcoin to this address. Right? <laughs> Do, have you have you guys worked on the the flow as far as you know upfront payment versus post payment or any anything along those lines? Are you going to give options there or what's your thoughts? I mean, you know, we, we we love options. You know, frankly, you know, upfront payment is 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 more reliable. Um, so to the extent that we can uh, have, have practices do that, and some practices are comfortable with it, some practices prefer to wait till insurance is processed and everything. And yep. yeah, for sure. We're, we're big fans of collecting copay. We're, we're separately from telehealth doing a lot of work around uh, patient liability estimations so we can understand what the likely liability is so that we could uh, collect all the, the money up front if possible, or at least give people an option to pay up front. Um, just saves a lot of time, ha hassle, and energy than you know, sending balance bills and things like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, back back when those things called conferences existed, uh, I heard a, a, at the MGMA conference a, a practice manager that said, we need to be getting to the refund business, which I, I thought was an interesting uh, take on that, right? It is. Uh, uh, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, getting paid. I mean, getting paid is going to become even more important as there are, many are struggling. So uh, how about telehealth-specific billing and verification? I mean, it, interesting enough, Athena Health is known for your billing and taking that on. I, I imagine this is an extension of that? Uh, it is. And, you know, it's, it's been a real journey because the, you know, the payers, uh, you know, obviously made a bunch of changes to the way they reimburse telehealth for the better. Um, but in some cases, they did it retroactively, which, you, you know, some levels you go, that's awesome, but we've already sent your claims in. 
<laughs> so then there's this like, well, do we resend the claims with a new thing or do you just adjust it? Or So it's been a, a, a pretty amazing task for us uh, to make sure that we, we, we maximize collections for all of our clients. And I think it's one of the things that we are known for that and we're really good at it, but it definitely tested our capabilities to make sure that we got through the, especially the retroactive changes <laughs> to, the, uh, to the payment process. Well, I bet your customers are like, great, Athena Health will just figure this out. Unfortunately, we had to figure it out. So it's been it's been quite a, quite a journey. Excellent, cool. Well, that that's kind of the lightning round of features. I mean, I'm sure we could add more, and it will be interesting six months from now uh, what other features become standard. But uh, at least now we have a nice baseline for you. Um, let's shift gears a little to kind of the third party solution you know you talked about you have the athena marketplace with a lot of marketplace partners how will you approach it with uh, you know ehr customers of yours that already have a telehealth solution or or maybe choose to move to a different one for whatever reason they they like some of the feature set of another solution uh, i assume you'll collaborate them with them through the marketplace is that how you're approaching it yeah, I mean, you know, this is, I think, one of the beauties of Athena is that we, you know, we, we view we do not have a monopoly on innovation and good ideas, um, and we open our system up as, as wide as we possibly can. So uh, we have a bunch of telehealth vendors that have already integrated in. We're actually working with a couple of, of our, our, our customers that have a, a different telehealth platform, or in some cases are building their own telehealth platform, and uh, we make all the APIs that we use available to everyone. So um, we, are, we are truly an open system, and, and we'll continue to be so. And have there, you know, and maybe this is some for a question for someone else, so feel free to pass if you don't know, but, uh, you know, were there new integrations that were needed in order to really facilitate this, or did you already have the telehealth partner so they had already built that into the APIs? I mean, we, we certainly already had APIs that people could use. Um, you know, the, billings, the billing aspect of it changed quite a lot, um, so there are some new options on the billing side, uh, depending gotcha. on kind of what, whether the partner is scheduling appointments or they're using our, our stuff to schedule appointments there's some new, new, new capabilities on, under the hood that people could take advantage of. And then also, you know, as far as partners, are there certain areas where you're like, hey, we are not going to go in this place. We already talked about ratings and reviews might be one area where you're like, no, that's not really on our product roadmap. Are there other areas? And, and maybe, yeah, I look at it as are there other areas of opportunities for entrepreneurs to say, oh, I could make Athena Health better. Are there some that you're like, no, that's not us? Yeah, you know, and, and we're honestly currently doing a lot of internal uh, understanding and, and, and having some good debates about, you know, okay, so now we have telehealth, you know, at first order, we could do what we're doing now, which is enabling our customers to deliver telehealth. That's great. Um, you can imagine other things that we could do, right? Could we allow some of Athena physicians to service other physicians' patients, right? Either on a call coverage kind of basis, an after hours basis. Um, yes. You know, would that make sense? Would it make sense for us to have a network of Athena physicians that we actually go to source patients for, um, either through a, through a third party or maybe another telehealth firm? So yeah. there are a bunch of different things you could do when you open the aperture and say, hey, telehealth, let's say it's 12 or 15 percent of visits going forward versus 0.2. You know, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of interest there. And, and we're trying to figure that out. So we're, we're certainly very open to partnership, um, you know, with, with existing telehealth vendors or with, uh, with, with our customers, try to, to try to figure out what are the new models. And, and then, you know, we haven't talked a lot about this, but we kind of put remote patient monitoring in the same bucket. Um, you know, that starts to get a little asynchronous. So you get a little bit, you know, taken on risk. Can you actually have maybe some care managers that are keeping an eye on, on your patients and, and intervening before things go bad, before they have to call urgent care, uh, before they have to show up at the ED? So there's a bunch of stuff in the category of virtual care that I think this crisis has kind of opened people's eyes to. I mean, We've had so many physicians conduct their first telehealth appointment in the last four months, right? Um, and that just gets the entrepreneurial juices flowing as people try to figure out how to leverage it and how to create new, better ways of accessing healthcare. So um, I just have no idea, you know, what this is going to look like in a year. And, you know, I reflect on the fact that you know, eight months ago, if you'd asked me, I would have said telehealth, what? No, not, not, not a priority. <laughs> uh, and now we're thinking about all kinds of new business models. So um, there's, there's, there's a lot there and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's super interesting. Uh, 
I, I'll throw it out since you're not allowed to, but yeah, you can see a, an interesting acquisition of say a health grades or a ZocDoc or something, and then, and then doing the telehealth visits on top. That, that's really fascinating. Uh, I said it, not you, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think you're right though about RPM. Uh, where is all that going to go? Is the reimbursement going to finally come through, which is why it hasn't exploded. And, and to me, that's why these interviews are focused on live video telehealth. It's because the reimbursement is there. Whereas in the remote patient monitoring, chronic care management, we haven't, you know, we've seen more adoption because of forced and, and a few other things, but the reimbursement hasn't caught up there. So I think that will determine some of the strategy there. At least that's my, my take. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, how, how do you see, I mean, you kind of talked a little bit about it here, but, you know, how, it sounds like telehealth has now become a, a fundamental piece of the organization and, and part of the growth of the business of Athena Health. Yeah, I think very much so. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 hard to see, you know, two years from now, and when hopefully COVID is in the rearview mirror, exactly where it ends. But you know, it it, it appears that, you know, thankfully, uh, telehealth is finally starting to get 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 become a way of treating patients, and virtual visits will be a thing. And you know, it's definitely part of what we do, and we need to enable our providers to do it, which is why we went and built uh, built the telehealth solution. So we're excited about it, and uh, I'm really excited to see what the next two years have in store. And real quick, do you charge extra for the telehealth, or it's all part of the EHR package, or what's the approach? Um, and through March, we do not charge for it, and it's probably letting something out of the bag that we haven't told people, but we, we will be charging for it. We're trying to figure out exactly how much and in what mechanism. Um, there's a fair amount of variable cost to it as, as you're hosting video servers sure. all over the place and, and all that good stuff. But um, but so we, we we will charge for it. We're, you know, we're not going to prove the Athena Health profit model on the thing, but uh, uh, definitely uh, it will be an add-on product. Got it. Cool. Well, thanks so much for sharing the insight. This is a great overview of where Athena Health's looking at it. You know, I think we covered a lot of ground here. So it's, it sounds like we need to come back six months, a year from now, and, uh, and see how everything's evolved and changed. Uh, we could have a follow-up conversation. But thanks so much. We've been here with Paul Bryant, Chief Product Officer at Athena Health. And if you want to find out, find more great healthcare IT content like this, check it out at healthcareittoday.com. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.